Hello and welcome to an Unreal Skill um, basic tutorial. This is for Modern Warfare, as most of mine are, and it's for using Cheat Engine with Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer. Now, usually I use single player, but I think this one deserves uh, a bit of credit. It's easy to do, and I think most of you can follow it. The difficulty is, in order to make it work usefully, you have to incorporate other tutorials. So what we'll do is we'll start Cheat Engine and we'll start Modern Warfare 3. Now, can take a little time to start, it should start quicker than it is at the moment. So here we are, we have that open. I'm going to leave that uh, mess about with for a while because uh, it does take a little bit of time to connect properly. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to attach Cheat Engine. So how we do that is we go to the processes up here and then we add IW5MP, MP standing for multiplayer, dot .exe. So we have that added now and we press play, connect into online services and there you see I am. So what we basically need to do is understand how this works. So when you go into multiplayer you have your different uh, types of game play. And what you basically need to do is work out what the minimum player requirement is. Now, I already know for Team Deathmatch you need eight players, and for Free For All you need four players. This makes life very easy for me to search now for the uh, address. So, what I'd basically do is I'd type in four here, and then go to Free For All and immediately press first scan. Taking me into a game. <coughs> so, now the problem is I've got to get out of the game. Of the game. So there we have all the uh, number fours with some extra. So what I can basically do now is go into find game again, and I'm going to change this to the number eight because I'm now going to go for a team deathmatch. Now team deathmatch is usually full and probably take me into a game again. So I'm going to go into capture the flag, which is highly unlikely to take me in within the first five seconds. So we do a next scan and then we've got all our eights again and we keep going through this process um, until we reduce the numbers down and it's the it should usually only take about three or four searches so standard playlist and we go for free for all and next scan and there we go we've got two addresses basically going to do is uh, add both of these to the bottom here. I know one of these is going to be the force host so I'm going to basically activate this here which means it's going to force the figure whichever I put into the value now here um, and it will keep repeating that value in there so I'm going to put number one because that's I only want one player to enter it and that one player to be me. So now I'm going to go into standard playlist again and again one of the least popular games and it should take me in first time. There you go. It's forced the host and I am now going in with a couple of players but I am the host. And I'll come back out of there. So now we know it's forced host and we know that uh, what the memory address is. We need to be a bit more precise than that because the memory address can change all the time. So what we're going to do is use what's called a pointer scan. Now again this can take a little while up to about 30 seconds to a minute. So we'll go through the pointer scans now. Or at least I would hope it would. Well it seems like my uh, pointer software has uh, an issue um, with the camera so now I've actually got it up and running and we are now searching for pointers we are also going to get interrupted with another window in a moment. So here we have our pointers and as you can see there is a large number of them uh, which makes life a lot easier so if I just add a few of these you can see them automatically being added. So here we have the pointers so no matter what happens now I've got somewhere where I can go to. Now you can 
actually go a lot further than this and find out what accesses this address and actually get the true um, static address but sometimes you can't write to static addresses because they're protected so we'll stick with the pointers for now what I'm basically going to do is take a little break and then we will go through how to actually use this in a program such as Visual Basic <laughs> 